in this video, we're going to try and wrap up the main parts of the uh, bridge application and we're going to build out our map. And it's going to give us a chance to play with a few more parts of Angular that we haven't seen yet, review some of the things that we've already done, a bunch on, and also integrate with some third-party JavaScript and CSS. And one of the big superpowers of being a web developer is if you know how to use modules and you know how to use style sheets and you know how to import things and require things, etc., and you know how to use NPM, somebody has already written code that does much of what you want to do. So in this case, I want to do maps. I'm not going to build map code from scratch. I'm going to pick up a existing open source library and I'm going to use it inside of our application. So just a note, everything that we're going to do today, there are actually pre-built uh, Angular components for working with Leaflet. So one of the popular ones is this one, NGX Leaflet. The reason I'm not going to use it is that it requires us to do a bunch of work um, with the configuration files and so on in our project that I think is beyond the scope of what I want to do as you're getting started on this. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my own component that wraps around Leaflet, not because it's better, but just because it's going to allow us to talk a little bit more about lifecycle events and things that happen inside of Angular, which this component would take care of for us. Okay, so before we get going on this too far, a quick note on what you have to do to use Leaflet. So essentially what Leaflet does is you give it a div and you tell it that you want it to control that div, it's going to be responsible for rendering everything that goes in here. And the way that this works is it's an interactive map and it is exposing an API. So here's an example of the code below var map equals l map set view to this longitude, this latitude, this zoom level. So what's happening here is it's going to create a map that is positioned to this part on the globe. And then below you can see that it is loading a tile library. And one of the things that Leaflet does, the way that all these mapping technologies works, work are that as you need more uh, to display things at different magnifications or different zoom levels, or you move around on a map, it has to load in new tiles. So it's loading squares, images, statically generated images. And there's lots of different um, map providers. Some of them are free and some of them cost money. So I'm going to use the default one, the OpenStreetMap one. But if you want, you can go and you can find lots and lots of different people who've created different tile sets. Um, and some of these you will have seen, like for example, the stamen ones are neat. They look like watercolor paintings or, you know, there's some of them that have satellite imagery instead of um, more of a drawing style or they have, you know, there's, uh, you can get very, very different looking map tiles and Leaflet knows how to render all of those. Really, really powerful. So what we need is we have to provide a div. We need to load a CSS file for Leaflet. And we need to load in the JavaScript, which is the Leaflet um, API. And then we need to use it. So Leaflet has really great documentation. And again, I'm always going to try and push you to the docs. I think that a lot of times when people are, are new to things, they know there's documentation, but they start going to Stack Overflow or they start, you know, Googling to try and find the answers. I would really encourage you, obviously use Stack Overflow, everyone uses it, that's not a problem, but don't be afraid to go really deep into the docs because every one of the methods that we're going to use today, all of the code that we're going to use, it's all documented really well. And the secret to getting good at this stuff is just having tabs open to documentation so you can see what's going on. Okay, so my goal is to fill out this right-hand side so that we can display and render a map uh, of the currently selected bridge. As we click on a bridge, I want it to show this is the particular bridge that you just clicked on. This is where it is. I want a little pop-up that has the name of the bridge and so on. Okay, so let's, let's dive into this. And the very first thing that we need to do is we need to make it so that our, well, let's just, re let's review for a second. Right now, what we have at the top level, we have an app component. 
our app component is keeping track of some state. It keeps track of the current bridge, which is selected by the user. The current bridge gets set when the menu emits an event up to the app component and says, this is the bridge that was just selected. And we keep track of that as a member of, of our app component. What we did last time was we got this top panel working. So we, we passed in, so if you look at the app component HTML, in this bridge info component, we are binding the bridge property to the current bridge that's in the app component TS. So this is what allows us to pass props down to our child component. And inside of the bridge, bridge info component itself, you'll see that we are using that bridge to pass it down to the info panel. So I need to do, I, I need to do the same thing I need to bind the bridge on the bridge info component to its child. Down, I want to pass it down to the top, to the child to the bridge info map. So think about what we have to do to make this work. We need to create a slot inside the child component, the map component, which can receive from its parent this bridge. Okay, so if we go and let's take a look at the, let's go into the, the map components TypeScript and let's, let's do this. So as you'll recall, what do we have to do? We have to define a property. So we're gonna have a bridge of type bridge and we need to specify that this is going to come from the parent. So we need to decorate this using the input decorator like so, so that the bridge is available to the map, okay? So far, so good. Now, what does the, what does the map look like? Like what, what do we need to do with the map? Well, we said that if you remember, what is leaflet? Leaflet needs a place to put this map. It needs, a, it needs a div that it can render into. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and we're gonna say that our, our component has a div and the ID is map. That's it. So we have an empty div where leaflet is going to place all of the um, rendered tiles that it's gonna show for the, the currently selected location. Okay, right now it doesn't do anything. We don't have anything. We select something, nothing happens because we aren't using that. We aren't using this right here. Let's get some CSS out of the way. I need my map, I need this div to be as high as it can be and as wide as it can be within its parent. So within this available space, the white space you see here. So what do we need to do? We need to go into here and say that our map has a width of 100% and a height of 100% and save that. So that's gonna be good enough for making sure that it can be filled out. But we have another CSS task that we have to do. We have to specify that we want to import the leaflet CSS. So leaflet, leaflet itself comes with CSS. Now, how are we gonna, how are we gonna use leaflet? There's a couple of ways we could do this in terms of installation. If we were to go to the download section, one possibility is we could download leaflet like from the website and I could click here and I could download it and I could copy it into my code. But I don't want to do that because I, I want to be able to keep track of future versions of leaflet. So if they ship a new version, you can see they're already working on version 1.7 and 1.6 is the current version. I need to be able to update my code. I don't wanna do something manual. Another thing I could do is I could use a CDN. So the CDN links are great because if I, like if I take this um, URL right here and I open it up in a browser, you'll see that I get the code for Leaflet. 
So here is all the code, it's available from a web server and I could integrate it into my system at runtime. However, I've got a build step in my code already. Angular has a build step and I'd like to take advantage of the build step. So I would like to be able to import leaflet the same way that I'm importing all my other TypeScript modules and so on. So I don't think I want to do it that way. So it says you can also get it using a package manager and that's the way that I want to go. So I want to install leaflet as a module inside of node modules. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say npm install leaflet. Now, where should it go? Does this go in my dependencies or my dev dependencies? So remember that we said dependencies is for all of the things that you need for runtime. So it's things that are part of your app and dev dependencies is for everything that is used to compile your code, command line tools, etc. So I'm going to save this into my regular dependency. So I'm going to say dash dash save and I'll install leaflet. Because I'm working in a TypeScript environment, I also need to install a couple of other things. I need to install some type information. So one of the things you'll notice if you look at package.json, um, my leaflet installation, by the way, is done. See how I now have a dependency that says leaflet, it's using version 1.6.0 or whatever, if there's a minor version that it can take, like, um, you know, 1.6.1 or whatever, it would install that. But if you notice here, I've got a bunch of things that start out with at types, at types jasmine, at types node. When you're working in TypeScript projects, you'll often be told that you need to also install types. And so this is information for the TypeScript compiler that says if you're using leaflet and leaflet's written in JavaScript and you want to include it into a TypeScript project, someone has to define all the types. And so often those types are defined inside one of these types packages. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to npm install into my dev dependencies two more things. So I want to install types slash leaflet, and it also uses um, a GeoJSON. It needs types for GeoJSON because of the way that leaflet is structured. So I'm going to install both of these as well. And these will get added to my dev dependencies inside my project. So that's going to allow me to work with the leaflet code, even though it's written in JavaScript. So you'll see now I've got, here's leaflet types. Here's the GeoJSON types uh, available for us to work with. This is hilarious. I've never seen a major version so high, 7,946. That's fascinating. Okay. So what are we going to do now? So the next thing that I want to do, let's take a look at what leaflet installed. So if you go into node modules, somewhere way, way down in the L's here, we'll find leaflet. Here's leaflet. So when it installs leaflet, what you get is you're going to get a distribution directory. Inside here are all of the different files that we can work with. So there's a CSS file and there's a bunch of JavaScript files and there's also JavaScript.map files. So you can see that the code has been released in a number of ways as, um, as, a, as a ECMAScript module, ESM file, as a regular JS file, just as a raw JS file. Um, and also here's the leaflet.css. So this leaflet.css is the file that I want to include in my Angular project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and load it directly out of the node modules folder. So I'm going to, if we go back here, I'll just collapse this down. I'm going to grab my style.css and at the very top of my style.css, I'm going to tell it that I want to import another file. I want to import inside node modules, leaflet, dist, leaflet uh, CSS. And Webpack is smart enough to be able to say, um, how, it'll resolve that for me and it will figure out how to pull the leaflet CSS into, into my project for me so I have access to it. It'll happen at 
build time. So I won't have to do anything special to be able to, um, to use this. I just have to put it inside of my style sheet, my main style sheet here. Okay, so let's keep going. So what do we have to do now? We need a div to place the map. We did that. We need to import the modules and the types. We did that. We need to bring in the CSS. We did that. So the last thing we need to do is we need to actually make use of the make use of the map inside of our code. Okay, so let's work on that. So our map is being it's being used right here inside of our bridge info panel component, and we're passing down the bridge. So in the map, we're going to receive this bridge so that we can make use of all the different parts of um, all the different parts of this uh, of the bridge the longitude the latitude the name and so on okay so what I'm going to do now is I have to write a bunch of code for leaflet if we go back to the screen here I essentially need to write a bunch of code that looks like this so I have a component that's going to that's going to have the map in it, but then I have a bunch of leaflet specific code. So in order to keep my code a little bit cleaner, I'm going to break that out into its own class. So I'm going to create a new file inside of my my bridge info map folder. I'm going to make a new file in here called leaflet-map.ts. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import everything from uh, import star as leaflet from the leaflet module. So I have access to all of the, the parts of the leaflet library. And I'm going to make a class which my component can use. So I'm going to have a leaflet map class like so, and I'll export this over into my other file so my other file can use it. Okay, so the way that leaflet works is you have to pass it a reference to the DOM node that you're gonna use. You can either pass an HTML element or you can pass a string, which would be a selector that it would use, like the ID to use to be able to work with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that my leaflet map has a map property and what is the type of the of this it's a leaflet dot map so the type information that I pulled in is what's going to allow me to specify types all these types have been predefined the same way that we had to define what a bridge was somebody else had to define what a leaflet map is and when we pull in those types we automatically get this later on well I guess I'll just keep it simple for now let's just do the math so in my constructor I want to be able to receive the ID of an element that I want to use. And this is going to be of type string. And I want to use that to basically generate a map just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this.map is equal to leaflet.map. And I'm going to pass it the ID that I, that I received, like so. So that'll be enough to create the map. Then I need to set up this tile layer. So it knows in this map, I want to be able to use this service for loading all of my map tiles. So I'm gonna say uh, leaflet dot tile layer, and I'm gonna load HTTPS and I give it this uh, string, which is a, a template for the URL for these tiles, tile.openstreetmap.org takes a Z, an X, and a Y.png to load those. And what I wanna do is I want to add this to my map. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time teaching how Leaflet works, but again, the documentation for all this is here. So if you wanted to know about, whoops, let me go back. If I looked for 
tile layer, it's documented and you could go and you could read about how it works. Okay, so I'm going to add it to my map. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to take the map and I want to tell it what to show. So we're doing something, we're doing a project which is about Ontario. So let's, let's do this. Um, longitude and latitude of Ontario. Okay, so this is the longitude and latitude of Ontario according to according to Google. So what I want to do is I'd like to take the map and I'd like to set its view to be, it says here, it takes a longitude and latitude expression and a zoom number. Okay, so what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to say const Ontario is equal to the coordinates of Ontario. This is a new uh, leaflet dot lat long. So the numbers are, let me just copy and paste these. And this is 85 west, so it's negative. And okay, so there's that. And I also want a zoom level, I don't know, a default zoom level of five, like so. So this is Ontario. So what I want to do is I want to specify that I'm going to use the Ontario coordinates and the Ontario zoom for my map by default. So here's my very simple wrapper around leaflet. And what I need to do now is I need to make use of this inside of my, in, let me just save these files before I forget. I need to make use of it inside of my map component. Okay. So in the map component, I have a few things that I need to do. First thing that I need to do is I need to import my leaflet map class from the leaflet map TypeScript file that I was just working in. So now I have access to this class and I am going to specify that this class, my bridge info map component has a property called a map and the map is of type leaflet map. Now I have a problem. My problem is I need to create a new instance of my map. So essentially what I need to do is I need to do something like this. This dot map is equal to new leaflet map map like this. So what I need to do is I need to pass it a reference or not a reference, but I need to pass it an ID, which points to an element in the page. In this case, it's going to be, where's my map component? It's going to be this div right here. But my problem is that the constructor is not the right place to do this. So your constructor is when the class gets created. And when the class gets created is not the same time as when all of the view components get rendered in the DOM. So I need to hook into a life cycle event inside the life of a component. So in React, we had things like component did mount, component will mount, component will unmount. We had all of these hooks that you could say, I want to be able to run code when this happens, when this happens, whenever a certain piece of um, functionality is about to happen with our, with our code. And you can actually see how Angular does this. So you notice that when I generated this uh, component using ng-generate, it created for me a, a method here called ng-on-init, which returns void. And you'll see up at the top here, it says on-init is being pulled in from Angular core, and my bridge info map component implements on-init. 
So if I hover over this, you can see that this is a lifecycle hook. So there are quite a few lifecycle hooks that you can use in Angular. And what they, what they give you is they give you a moment in the life of the component when something's about to happen. The component, in this case, the component is about to be initialized. So this is only gonna happen once, and it's a great time to do any initialization work. So the constructor is not the right time to do this. So maybe I should move this into the initialization. The problem with initialization is that the view has not been set up yet. So my DOM element is not there. And if I try and run this, what's going to happen is it's not going to work because leaflet needs for the, the div to exist and the div won't exist yet. So that's not going to work. So I need a different lifecycle hook that, um, that I, could, I could tap into. So the one that, I, the one that I'm going to use is I'm going to use uh, after view init, and I'm going to specify that this implements after view init, which means that if I implement after view init, it means that I have to have a method called ng after view init, which I'll show you. I'll do it right here. ng after view init takes void like this, or returns void rather. And I'm gonna paste this in here. So now what I've done is I've said, this is a component. The component has a map property, but the map property can't be initialized until the view has been initialized, until all of the pieces of the DOM are set up in such a way that I can work with them. So I'm gonna save this. Let's see how this works. So this dot map equals new leaflet map map. What are we missing? Don't have a map here yet. Okay, so need to debug. I was just I just paused it there to take a look at this and see what was going wrong. And I think the issue is it's a it's an issue in the DOM of height. So let me just show you the problem here. So here's my here's my app. So I've got my menu, I've got my bridge info. You can see that the bridge info is taking up all of the space that I would expect. It's got the right height. But then as I go down, you see what happens here? This inner div that lives inside here has a height of zero. So what's happening is my map is here and it inherits a height of zero. So it is a, a height of 100%, but it's a height of 100% of zero. So there's the problem. So what we need to do is we need to figure out why this is. So in the bridge info component, bridge info component, I have the leaflet map here. And let's see what the CSS is. Yeah, so so this is this is a problem. So the the uh, bridge info component CSS, the leaflet map needs to specify and say, that the height is 100% and for good measure, width is 100% too. Let's see if that does it or if I still am missing one. So now I have my bridge info is 100%. This one here still doesn't get it. So what is the child? So let's go have a look at the leaflet map component uh, which is here. So I wonder if I need to specify that the host height is 100%. So the containing element that Angular is putting it in. So what do we have? We have 100% here, still don't have 100% here. Hmm. Just taking a look at this 
uh, so I don't waste your time. But this is another trying to debug this stuff with height because height height has to be set. It's not automatically 100% for these things. So if we take a look at what's going on here, what do we have? We've got the bridge info has height 100%, but then there's a div inside it that doesn't. So if we look, that must mean that in our bridge info HTML, yes. <sighs> Silly me. So I've got a div, but I have no styling on this div to say um, this is, let's just try getting rid of it so that these things are living inside of the parent rather than in this. And that works. So the map was there, but not being rendered. Okay, so we're getting closer. So I now have a map of Ontario which is displayed, you know, zoomed out quite a ways out. And until I click a bridge, nothing happens. Now I'm going to have to fix this so that when uh, I click on one of these, I get, I get the appropriate uh, map displaying. So that's our next, that's the next piece of the puzzle that we need to show here. Okay. So in our, in our map component, let's, make another change. So what we have right now is we've specified that we can accept input from a parent with the bridge that is currently selected. So the state comes down through the parent and the parent uh, passes it down from the app to the bridge info component from the bridge info component down into the map component and it does it through data binding one-way data binding down into the child. So this is like a prop coming down. What we need to do is we need to make it possible so that we can listen for changes to this. And based on the changes to this, whenever this gets updated, we need to update our map. Okay, so that's interesting. So what we need to do is let's start by writing the changes to our class to make this possible. So what I wanna do is I want to add a method to our leaflet map uh, called update. So update is going to take a latitude, which is a number, a longitude, which is a number, and it's also going to take the name of a the name of a bridge that we're going to show in a pop-up. And what we're going to do is we are going to essentially what I want to be able to do is I want to do the same thing we just did right here. I want to move the map to the I want to move the map to um, the new location. OK, so what I need to do is I need to take the latitude and longitude and I need to package it up as a set of coordinates. Uh, new leaflet dot latitude and longitude, and it takes lat and lawn. So I package it up as an object that can be used by leaflet. I'm going to say this.map.setView, and I'm going to pass it the new coordinates, and I need to pass it a, a new zoom level. So let's zoom in more. So I don't know, 14. So we zoom in closer so we can see what's going on on the ground. And, um, well, let's try that. That might be enough just to get us going. So I have a method called update. So now in my component over here, I need to call update. So whenever the user clicks on a map, I need to be able to um, receive that there's been a change. I need to know that there's been a change and I need to be able to update my component based on this. So in order to do this, because I'm building my own component that connects with third-party JavaScript, I have to hook into the, again, another lifecycle event of an Angular component. So in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna lis listen for changes on the component. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pull in on the on changes. I wanna be able to implement on changes. And when you implement on changes, again, I'm going to write a lifecycle hook. ng on changes takes changes of type 
simple changes and it returns void. I have to I have to pull in simple changes as well. Simple changes is a type that Angular defines for me. Okay. So the way that simple changes works is that it it's very similar to what React does in the sense that there are lifecycle hooks in React for getting the previous and the current state of props if you need to be able to do some kind of comparison manually. And that's exactly what this does too. So the changes is going to have all of the input elements that are being passed down, and it's gonna have a current version and a previous version. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I wanna say, first of all, if we don't have a map, then don't do anything. If we have a map, then keep going. So if the changes.bridge.current value is set, then what I want to do is I want to get the latitude, longitude, and name out of the current value. So I'll use object destruct destructing to say latitude, longitude, and name is equal to changes.bridge.current value. And I'll use those to pass into our map, into the update function, the latitude, longitude, and name for this that we want to be able to test. So let's try this out. So I'm going to, nice. Click on these and have it select. Now I've made one more change. I paused it and added one more piece of code in here just to for sake of time, which I will bring up here now. And that is to the update method. I wanna be able to manage a pop-up. So every time that I change bridges, I wanna be able to pass in a string and I wanna get that string so that I can display this is the particular bridge that I'm displaying on the map. This is the pop-up that shows it. So what I'm doing here in my class, I've added in addition to map, I've also added a pop-up member. And the pop-up member down here, after I set the view, I'm saying, if we have a pop-up, do this. Well, the first time through, we're not going to have a pop-up. So the first time through, what it's gonna do is it's going to create a new pop-up, leaflet.popup. I set up a few defaults on it so that the user can't close it, so there's no close button, so I don't have to deal with any weird state. I set up the coordinates, I set the name, and I open it on the map. And I'm taking all of that and I'm storing it inside this.popup. So the next time that I come through here, the next time you click, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna move that pop-up by setting new latitude and longitude co coordinates and setting new content for the name. And it will be able to come back and say, all right, well, this is the, this is the map that you wanna see. And this is the pop-up for that map. Okay, so that's it. So this is, these are all of the pieces that I wanted to look at for now. We can add more to this and I want to, uh, as we're working our way through Angular, I wanna do things like we can add routing, we can work with forms, we could do, we could do some neat things here with being able to automatically filter through this list or, but this has already given us a lot of exposure to working with components, using the build tools, debugging the code, being able to work with very simple components, wrapping third-party libraries in CSS in order to create more complex components inside Angular, um, being able to work with data. Later on, we're gonna talk about how to load data from a network. So if you're gonna pull it out of a database, or in this case, we just statically put the data inside it. But it gives us a pretty good overview of some of the things you can do in Angular and um, what I'll do is I'll post this code so you can read the code yourself and you can try it out and you can 
um, go back through any of these videos for things that don't make sense. Also, if you have questions about this, if there are parts of it that you know, you're struggling to understand, make sure you write them down. Let me know in class uh, when we're talking on online or send me an email and I'll help you out. So that's it. I'll pause there and we'll come back for more Angular later.